Hello there, my dear friend. This is uh, Guy Ferdinand here of Satori Prime with you. And uh, maybe you're new to our community here. Maybe you've been here for quite some time and uh, you're just still exploring and figuring out, hey, if there's something we can do here to help you. So I just want to remind you, you know, wherever you are in your journey, um, myself and my brother are here to uh, support you in your growth journey. Now, you may or may not have heard this line, but I truly believe and take this to heart that great teachers, they don't tell you what to see. They actually show you where to look. And so the content that we distribute uh, amongst our community, the trainings that we do every Tuesday in the group, all this is in an effort to uh, point at different facets of human consciousness to elicit a type of response within you. And the response is more awareness, right? If we can uh, grab onto and understand our awareness, so if we can learn how to locate it, then learn the qualities of it, we can start learning uh, what it is that we need to do on a daily basis to repair certain ruptures that have happened to us throughout our human development cycle, which happens to everybody I have ever met, right? We've all experienced trauma one way or the other. Even those of us who've had wonderful upbringings, I had incredible parents, um, you know, on paper, and uh, there could still be something like an energetic misattunement. My parents were immigrants. They weren't around as much as they probably wanted or needed to be. They didn't know how to offer presence. They were dealing with survival um, and they were you know, there when I needed them, but they were uh, had a lot of energetic misattunements. And so in my upbringing, in my development, this created a lot of confusion in my system because I hold a lot of despair and anger. I was suicidal and, um, you know, really depressed growing up. And this didn't make sense because the environment I was in didn't seem conducive to that. And so I actually had not only confusion, but an internal struggle with looking at my life and realizing, why do I feel this way? And it took me decades of looking at that to really have insight. Now we can all have mental insights about why something got structured a certain way, why we are the way that we are, but ultimately we may find that this is a, a shortfall and doesn't ultimately help us with repairing what really is just a sensation inside the body. And I want to take you guys today through a, uh, a, a quick like whiteboard session where I explain to you these three levels of consciousness that people move through on their pursuit of personal well-being, of liberation, of uh, removing fear, of becoming more action-oriented, and really realigning their system energetically to being a system that naturally and effortlessly produces better results in their life, okay? Because like whether you're a business owner, whether you're just a growth seeker, whether you've never even heard of any of these things that I'm about to share with you here, uh, at the end of the day, we all grew up with a certain type of conditioning. We are locked into the matrix of our own mind because of that conditioning. It could have been a religious upbringing. It could have been society. It could have been a societal upbringing, cultural upbringing. It could have been so many different things. It could have just been something that happened at home or didn't happen at home. A perception that you had, right? And I believe there's an there's an art to all of this. Like our our soul chooses these things for a reason, but we want to really understand how do I move from one level of consciousness to the next? If I feel stuck in my system, if I find myself having uh, repetitiously the same type of patterns, and these patterns are hurting myself, hurting others, hurting the results that I believe I could be producing, then this is the stuff that we want to get underneath and we want to bring awareness to. So I want to explain to you, I'm going to pull out a whiteboard here and share my screen with you and pull out my handy little pen. You may have noticed I have kind of a Thing in my hand. Um, I went through uh, quite an injury here and uh, the hand is still repairing. So it was fractured or something like that, maybe even broken. And so my writing is not going to be perfect, but the content is more important than anything else. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys right now. And again, I'm going to take you here through three pillars of consciousness that, that are really important that people understand. Because if you understand where you are, you understand where you're going and maybe even how to get there. And, you know, the programs that we devise here and everything that we offer in terms of uh, experiences, which is more important than any understanding you can ever grab, uh, these experiences are really what it's all about, right? Because we, we want to garner a direct experience that allows us to say, that's new, that transforms me. Uh, it's not just something I have to remember, like a test that you study for, and then two days later, it's gone. Like, what good is that for transformation? You want to deeply feel something, okay? So I'm going to kind of map out these three levels for you, 
And we'll also talk about what takes you into these uh, different levels, right? So oftentimes when people begin, we'll just start, we'll just call this level one, okay? And level one, we'll just say for, for sake of this discussion is kind of like the unaware mind. And, and it's really not the unaware mind, it's really the conditioned mind, okay? So we have this mind that's been conditioned again through all sorts of, all sorts of different things, your religion and your culture, um, the country that you grew in, the governance that it had, what you saw at home or didn't see at home. And it could even be the media that you devoured as a child, whether it was books or TV, radio, anything else, right? And so in this conditioned mind, we are kind of stuck in a version of reality that was really informed by the types of trauma that we experience. And here's what I mean by that. The mind is structured in such a way that when we experience something that overwhelms our system, our mind, our body, our energy has to figure out a way to help that child survive. Because I truly believe that every child born in this world is a sensitive child. Even the least sensitive people, all that really means is that they have a lot of armor around their sensitivity. And oftentimes when they were young, were the most sensitive type of children, which is why they had to create so much uh, armory in order to protect themselves from the overwhelm amount of sensations that they were experiencing. And so the mind is kind of tasked with this thing where it's really just trying to create safety. It's really, it's really what it all comes down to is our mind is desperately, desperately, desperately trying to create safety and as best as it can. Now, look, safety for people means a lot of different things, right? You, again, you may have a, uh, been like a, on the playground and you meet a bully and the day one the bully pushes you and embarrasses you and that's scary and overwhelming and people laugh and so you realize that this is you know you got to protect yourself maybe that first day you run away but the next day you don't know that the bully is going to be there but there's that bully again and on this day you know you decide that you are going to fight back if the bully pushes you and so you punch the bully who ultimately just punches you right back and you see that aggression ends up hurting you and got you more embarrassment and laughter. And so it goes on like this every day. Maybe the next day you try to um, make fun of the bully and being a comedian and that backfires. And maybe the last day, or you know, as you continue to try this, you realize that maybe you'll feel safer if there's other people around. So you begin befriending people. And when you meet the bully, you always make sure that you have two or three people around you. And on that particular day, the bully doesn't actually do anything. And so your mind registers that if I'm in connection with people, that is safety. And while there's some truth to that, that can also ultimately get you mired in this confusion that I have to be connected to people all the time. I have to please them. I have to do all these nice things to constantly get attention and be connected to people in order to feel safe. And when you're alone, you feel really not safe. And so you are stuck in the matrix of that reality. And so these little microaggressions that happen, these micro traumas that get repetitiously um, conditioned into us is really what we're all dealing with, right? And so when we're at this stage of mind, this stage of mind uh, does not like responsibility. So no responsibility. What it likes is to lay blame. You know, who's doing this? What's doing this? How did this happen? And again, we see this all over society, right? Where uh, people uh, avoid taking responsibility and instead look for uh, some kind of result. In this place, uh, usually people are pretty lackluster with their integrity. So integrity is not a focus for people. And this is a big one because if you don't have integrity in your life, and I'll explain more about that, uh, what ends up happening is that things don't work for you. So this is when people say my life is not working, oftentimes uh, integrity and bits of learning what responsibility really is, is what changes it for them, okay? So we have this safety, we have this conditioning, we have this lack of responsibility, we have this lack of integrity. And over here, uh, people often use uh, violent forms of communication. Violent communication, like you did this to me, or, you know, again, laying, laying blame on somebody, calling them names. Um, and it, the irony is with communication, especially when our relationships are failing, what we're really trying to do is just get in connection again, but we have this thing called an attachment system. And when our attachment system doesn't feel safe, then we fall back on this kind of uh, more violent communication strategies. And often it leaves us feeling the exact opposite of how we want to feel, right? So again, this is all around 
conditioned mind with awareness that's located here inside the head. And, you know, oftentimes over here, this is where you get a chattery mind. It's a chattery mind that is often keeping us awake, even keeping us awake, right? We're staying awake at night. It's talking a lot. We can't seem to quiet it down. It's saying things we don't like. And oftentimes it's saying things about you, you know, unpleasant things about you, like you're not good enough, you know, not good enough. I'm sorry for the chicken scratch, <laughs> not worthy. All these kind of things, okay? And so this is kind of where, where it is with this, okay? And so we want to transition, obviously, uh, out of this into a more holistic state, okay? And so in the level two mind, or level two of awareness, let's call that, we begin coming out of our conditioning and we get more into an aware state. I know today we have like the whole woke culture thing and we say like, you know, it's been, been deemed weird to call somebody woke, but let's just call it like a weekend, right? And what this means is that you, you start having some space from this conditioned mind. And the first way that you do that, first way that you do that is you create what's called a subtle mind awareness, okay? Subtle mind awareness. So, and so how do we create a subtle mind awareness? Well, if we sit here for a moment, just me and you, and we begin listening to our thoughts. So there's like a little voice in your head that you want to start listening to. And I'll just take a brief pause here so you can listen to your own mind. And it might be saying things like, I like this. I don't like this. Who is this guy? Why is he wearing a hat? Sure. He broke his hand. Oh, what's for dinner tonight? You know, like it has all this these opinions, it's a, it's a sub vocalization. It's a, like an inner narration of judgments of what we think is right and wrong, what we agree with and disagree with, right? And it's this constant chatter. And now most people don't have space from this chatter. They actually think that they, they are the chatter. Okay, so when we create a subtle mind awareness, it might be the first time that you as a person get a little space from this chatter and you start realizing that you are not this voice, you are actually the awareness that is listening to this voice, okay? And so there's a recognition with subtle mind awareness that it's not me. This is, again, just this mechanism. It's a mechanism. And this mechanism is, is really driven by the underpinnings or the unconscious underpinnings of how the mind believes it can create safety. So if you really listen to what your judgments are about, uh, what's informing those judgments is what you what makes you feel safe, right? So anything that doesn't make you feel safe, you're going to immediately be both inwardly and outwardly judgmental of. And generally speaking, what we are outwardly judgmental of, you know, some people or the way that they're acting or how they're being or whatever it might be, inwardly, we're going to have an inner critic that's even more harsh, okay? And so one of the ways that we can find out how our inner critic operates is by realizing that it is sub-vocalizing and constantly judging others and being uh, hypercritical of them outwardly. And so that's a, a kind of a key to getting in here, okay? In this level two mind, we also redefine responsibility. Um, and we'll get too much into that, but event essentially it puts you at the source of what's happening and it redefines what blame is because most people have uh, responsibility. So let's do that response. And they have it collapse with blame. Okay, so this is over here where we talked about no responsibility, lay blame. They have those two things collapsed. When you separate these things, and you can do this through um, an understanding in the mind, it's what we do in our level one program, we clearly define a new way of operating around responsibility. And what you ultimately realize is that which you are not responsible for is that which you are saying, I'm not the source of. And so if you're not the source of what's occurring, then you're also put yourself in a position where you can't do anything about it, right? Because over here, again, going back to level one, this is kind of a victim mentality. And I know we don't love using that word, but what I mean by that is your perception of the world is it's, it's happening maybe you already know what I'm gonna write, it's happening to me, right? And this is the really critical part that the ver view of the world from this level of mind is that everything is happening to me. God is against me, the world is against me, um, I'm helpless, 
uh, I'm the victim here. You know, I didn't want this, like all this kind of reality. And so you have no ability to respond from here. You are basically, you know, you're the kite in the wind and wherever the wind blows on any given day is how you feel, the results that you get, so on and so forth. And so there's not a lot of empowerment at this level of mind. But when we start realizing that responsibility and blame are actually two separate things, we can create a distinction in our mind that separates these. And we start noticing that our ability to put ourselves at the source of what's happening actually gets very easy. And then what we have is the ability to respond adequately to, to things that are happening in our life, okay? Uh, next part is uh, here, like I said, again, different than level one mind, we start learning how to use communication to repair, okay? Communication to repair. And repair what you might be asking? Well, relationships. Okay. Yeah, sorry for the chicken scratch. We're repairing relationships here. And the reason we're doing that is because you know the relationships in your life are 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 indicative of the quality of your life, obviously, right? Like you know whatever uh, disarray might be going on in a loving relationship with parents, with siblings, with friends, or whatnot. These are are things that are on repeat. So things that you did with your parents you'll usually uh, put on repeat with a loved one, like a spouse, and things you did with your siblings are generally speaking what you will do with your friends. And so the disarray or the lack of repair that's happening there is indicative of underpinnings of your conditioning. And so when we go into our relationships and we have very specific conversations with them that clean up and repair, and that's really what where this awareness begins to derive from. It's this uh, cleaning up work that we do, this which allows to clean up and grow up. Okay. This allows us to clean up and grow up. Um, it's this repair that basically starts feeling like these weights that you've been carrying uh, all your life, you can put them down. Weights put down. And why? It's because you get complete about things. You start getting complete. And that's another word for cleaning up. So things that are incomplete will get complete. This is like, a, you know, again, like you've been carrying around this weight that you don't even know because most of us, most of us have been carrying this weight around since we were kids. So it just becomes normal to carry it around. But when you start cleaning things up, it's like you put down that weight and a lot of people feel like spiritually much lighter. I know like when I did this the first time, it felt like 50 pounds had come off of me. I felt like I had a noose around my neck with a 50 pound rock that I was dragging around that I didn't even know I was doing. Okay. And it really leaves you in this beautiful, empowering place around choice. Okay. And I will just throw this out there. And again, we go into this in our level one training that I have yet to meet a person in my life that has actually made a choice in their life. Okay. I've met a lot of people that make decisions. This is not going to spell decisions right now. Decisions but I've very rarely, very, very rarely, actually, I can't think of a one situation where I ever met anybody who had made an actual choice in their life. Now, this might be confusing to you, but again, with level one, we have a conversation there where you guys can uh, investigate this for yourself. Like, have I actually made a choice in my life? Okay. And I just want to tell you right now that if you've made, if you've made a choice and that was based on some kind of circumstance or a preference you know, I choose this because X, Y, and Z, that is actually not a choice. That is actually what a decision is. And so we, we define these things for you guys very clearly. That's what distinction is, is clearly defining what things are instead of having an argument or an idea of what things are. You're very clearly about what, what it actually is. You create a re, you redistinguish, right? So if we read just, if you operate in the world of responsibility that most people are in right now, they can't take responsibility. If you redistinguish, you create a new distinction for them around responsibility, suddenly it becomes natural and easy to take it over, okay? And we start giving certain things up that we're doing in our lives that most people are doing, which are actually keeping them from having the life that they really want. And they, they're like the hamster in the wheel doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Obviously, obviously, obviously not working for them, but they keep doing it because that's just what they know how to do. Okay. So let me just uh, let me erase some things here. Let's see that one. So, so that's level 
level two, right? We create this awareness. We become aware of our subtle mind. We start separating uh, our reality, the truth of reality, from the reality that the conditioned mind has us perceiving that is true. I feel like I'm a school teacher right now erasing the whole whiteboard, by the way. Okay. So yeah, so we are creating, basically we are, we are untangling the conditioned reality that we've lived in. That allows us to come out of this victim mentality. It allows us to come outside of our programming. It allows us to come out of the patterns that we've lived in. And it gives access to a whole new world of possibilities, circumstances, and outcomes that we can choose into because now we are starting to operate out of a, a new type of reality, okay? Now in level three is most exciting for me because this is what I would call pure awareness, okay? Before we were talking about uh, waking up, I'm sorry, before we were talking about growing up and cleaning up, awareness is waking up. This is the real waking up work, okay? And in this work, this is this is the primary focus that Elon and I do with our clients today. This is what we work on personally. So for instance, you were to take our level one course, which is a six week program around mindset, it does introduce some stuff around energy and awareness as well, because you honestly can't separate the two. But if you wanna, if you are like, you're in a place right now where you gotta get your mindset right, you wanna investigate level one with our team. If you are a person who's got a pretty good foundation with your mind, or you wanna do mindset and the waking up work that I'm about to describe here, you also want to talk to our team, but you want to start looking at some of our later programs. Level one is pre-recorded and, and with some uh, live group training. Um, but if you want to work directly with Elon and myself, then you want to get into level two and level three uh, as quickly as possible so we can uh, bring you to these much higher states of awareness, right? And so before we were doing cleaning up and growing up work, right? That's all, again, all around integrity and responsibility. With awareness, we're actually doing waking up work, okay? And this, this by the way, most people have yet to touch, to do. This is very novel for most people. They've never actually done this type of work. Even if you are a very practice meditator, I promise you, chances are you have not done this kind of work uh, within yourself. It combines different type of therapies that have been developed uh, and it combines them with energy and awareness. And so what that means is just like we developed a subtle mind awareness, here we actually start creating a subtle, subtle, these are hard, the subtle body and subtle energy awareness, okay? Now, here's a cool part about this is we're all doing this all the time. Even right now, as you listen to me, you're already doing this, okay? You've never heard of this, but that doesn't mean you're not doing it, okay? And the way that awareness works is it doesn't teach you anything that you don't already know because you can't teach awareness anything because awareness is aware, it's aware of all things. And so you, there's really like nothing new to teach your awareness. What we do here, and this can only be done in my opinion with another teacher who's already done this type of work because another teacher taught them this work. Like Elon and I have a team around us of teachers that we regularly do this with because we all need mirroring. We all need connection. We all need reflection. And there's a, a few other reasons that I'll go into in here in just a minute about why we do this. But what we get here is to get pointers, okay? Pointers or glimpses or both really, okay? And this is another way of saying direct experience. I mentioned that beginning, like what's the, what's the use of understanding something that is just conceptual but hasn't become part of your direct experience? And so what happens here is with pointers is that awareness has these qualities. Okay. And in order to uh, really distinguish these qualities for yourself, you actually need to come out of your mind. So come out, coming out, come out of your, and this is the keyword here, conditioned mind. So you got to come out of your conditioned mind. Okay. So what does that mean? That means literally locating your awareness outside of your conditioned mind, okay? This is called local, a local local awareness. And when we come into this uh, state of consciousness, we enter non-local, okay? And this is really crucial, okay? So this is, I'm gonna actually 
put this in a different color because it's that important. So we want to create a, a, a non-local awareness. And the reason we do this is when you're at local, when you're at this local awareness, what you have is you have a mind that is merged with its conditioning. So you're actually merged with this conditioning over here. Okay. When you're merged with this conditioning, and this is why a lot of therapies actually fail or don't do what they promise to do, is you are looking at the event and the experiences and emotions, the mindset, but you're looking at it, you're looking at it from inside the experience. You're literally merged into the experience. So there's this experience of I am the subject having the experience. When we come to a non-local mind, this is another way of saying actually a higher state of consciousness. When we come to a non-local mind, we unmerge from these parts. And now what we get is we get, instead of an object having, or a subject having this experience, we have a subject. The awareness is the subject now, looking at an object, having the experience, okay? And the reason this is important because think about when you watch a movie, how it feels when you watch a movie, right? Like you may watch a scary movie or a rom-com or something that's a little bit sad and you're having all these emotional experiences, but you are watching a subject on the screen that's eliciting a response in your body. And so you're deriving pleasure from being the subject that is watching another object have an experience. But in our lives, we don't do this. In our lives, we are we are the object having the experience. And so everything is internalized. And this is why when people are having experiences or trying to create therapy in their lives, but they're merged with the part, they're actually looping in the experience. And sometimes going back and looking at the experience is actually harmful for their system because now they're looping in the trauma, re-experiencing the trauma, and it's actually rehabituating the trauma. The mind has to step in. It runs the program and conditioning that it's always known to try to create safety in this moment. And so in fact, you're just rehabituating your own trauma. So understanding or getting pointed to how to come out of this mind into a non-localized, unmerged mind is the key to healing. Okay. There's a few keys here, but this is a major key. And the other one is learning how to downregulate, downregulate your nervous system. Okay. Downregulate your nervous system. This is also called a parasympathetic response or having a rest and digest response. And again, I'm not telling you anything you don't know here because downregulation of the nervous system is what children do with their parents. When a child is upset, if you amp up your system as the parent, the child actually gets more upset. What, you, what the child wants is your care, your presence, your love and attention. Any parent knows this. You hold the child. The child is actually mimicking, literally templating your nervous system in that moment. And if your nervous system is calm, their nervous system will calm down. And they will get through that experience and just move on to the next experience as children do, right? From happy to sad to um, upset to this and that, but they can move through experiences very quickly. And this is what, what children don't have. They don't have a, a, a comprehensive nervous system response yet, and they're actually learning how to respond, templating energetically from mom and dad. And this is why a lot of us have trauma because our parents didn't learn this. They didn't have safe nervous systems. They don't know how to downregulate their nervous systems. And so we grew up in a house that has these nervous systems that are constantly in a fight or flight response. And so the children are being very sensitive and energetic, just pick up on that and literally template what the parents are doing. And that's why when you get older, you have children, you find yourself doing what your parents did, stuff of this nature, or you know, having similar responses to mom and dad or whatever it might be, because guess what? You basically templated mom and dad's nervous system. So you're kind of like a hybrid of what mom did and a little bit of what dad did. And that's what you get. So if we want to heal, we can't do it from the conditioned mind. We have to locate our non-local mind, and then we have to learn how to work with it. And what that really means is learning how to sit here more and more. The more we can sit in non-local minds and unmerge from parts, our body has this uh, natural healing ability. It's what we call a divine intelligence, really. Okay. And if you're sitting there going, huh? Well, divine intelligence is the same thing, just like when you cut your finger or when you break a bone or a woman gets pregnant, there's an intelligence there that repairs that, right? The finger will come back into its original form. The bone will come back to its original form. A body will get created in a woman's body. And notice that there's nothing, no feedback that you had to give. You don't have to, you know, the mother doesn't have to say to the body like, okay, it's time to make a foot now or 
it's time to you know cauterize this cut and you know get the you know get the template out for the finger like none of that has to happen there is a literally a divine and natural intelligence that takes over and just self repairs and that should tell you something about the status of things is that everything is trying to get back to homeostatic uh, like a homeostatic homeostatus or neutral state it's trying to come back to its original form essentially right homeostatus or neutral state and so it would seem odd then that our mind for whatever reason with all its traumas is not able to do this and i would offer that the reason our minds don't do this for everybody right now is because when you're merged with this local mind you are stuck your nervous system your body your energy your energy is bound and your system is stuck in a fight or flight response and so the body can't go into this response because the body needs to be at rest for this to work for so rest is what leads to healing and in order for us to rest we need to teach our nervous system how to do that we need to teach our system what it didn't learn from mom and dad which is actually how to get to a restful state and that's why we have the word digest even in science you ask them they call it rest and digest state. And we'll hear what we're digesting is we're digesting and metabolizing energy, right? Again, food is energy. Your body absorbs energy in lots of different ways, sun, minerals, water on your skin, but there's much more to that than, uh, than probably even science recognizes at this point in time, or at least most sciences, this is more relegated to pseudosciences which is that you're an energy being vibrating at a certain frequency. That frequency is eliciting a response from what we call reality or what Elon and I call an organic hologram that's responding to your energy output. If the energy is bound and stuck in a certain way, and this is where most people get stuck, is that they think in order to change their reality, that they need to do something. They need to do something in this world, put something into effect and you know, achieve something, create something, blah, blah, blah. But the energy hasn't changed. And so they get different versions of the same results. We flip that equation on its head. We say, hey, forget about your circumstances right now. Forget about taking action. What we wanna change is the quality, which is really important, the quality of this energy. Because the moment we change the vibration or the frequency, this is definitely science at this point in time. This is what Nikola Tesla was pointing to for a long time. Um, many scientists, you know, if all we are is vibration and frequency, your reality that you're experiencing is based on this vibration or frequency, then let's work on this first before we take any action. Okay. And this is what we call taking quality action, because if you can change the frequency of the body, the energy and how it's moving in there, then the quality of the actions that you take are immediately going to change. And so something that we teach here regularly and readily is that to not take action until the quality of the energy has changed. Otherwise, you're going to relegate yourself mostly to different variations of the same results. Okay. So again, this is kind of a summary. Obviously, we go into a lot of depth here. We show you guys how to get into these states through certain pointers. And this is, again, specifically what we do at level two and level three. Um, and this is, if you're interested, what you want to come and have a conversation with our team about, like, you know, let's, let's call it what it is. If this is interesting for you, even if you don't fully understand exactly what I said here, let me see if I can get rid of things. That's totally cool, right? Because this took me years to understand in my own experience. And, you know, what we are attempting to do here as an organization, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of all this thing for you guys to give you a little summary. That's not working. <clears throat> what we're trying to do, uh, you know, what we are doing as a company, not even trying to do as a company, is we are leading people to these higher states of understanding, to these higher states of consciousness. And then once you understand how this mechanism works within you, you can elicit this healing response 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It might not like be like that out the gate in the beginning. You're going to have to like sit very consciously and do this work, but you give this a few months and before you know it, this is your, your autonomic, your automated response. So if you are interested in learning these kind of processes, okay, and you might be hyper-focused on the mindset part and you really got to get that foundation down, cool. You might be super uh, interested in this awareness work. Yeah, and I want to let you know that this awareness work works because we target all three levels of trauma that happen at, okay? And well, here's what I mean by that. 
uh, we are relational be beings. And that means that we do work at the self to self level, self and myself, self and other, and then other to me, other to self, and then self to group and group to self work, okay? And so in order to repair trauma, you have trauma at every one of those levels. We all do, right? So it's like, if you have trauma in relationships, clearly that's self to other. If you, uh, you know, remember raising your hand at school and everyone laughing, right? Like that's self to group and that's happened many, many other times. And then there's just like the internal stuff. So there's only so much stuff that you can do on your own, sitting on a cushion, meditating, you know, listening to, to training. There's, there's stuff that you have to do on the court at the self to other uh, and self to group levels in order to really repair as much trauma in the system as possible from again, not, not your fault, but just things that happen to naturally happen to all of us at our developmental stages. So if you are interested in exploring this type of work, then the best thing to do is just to jump on the phone with our team. You can go over to souls and seekers. Oops. Seekers dot com forward slash book book as in book your call okay so souls and seekers dot com forward slash book and that will get you in a, on a 15 minute uh, what we call our clarity call clarity call with our team okay and let me even show you what that looks like so I'll open up my browser here and so it will uh, get you on with one of our one of our team members. Let's see. Here we go. And this is a cool page to go on because when you're on this page, you're gonna see um, you're gonna see uh, this video over here, which is a bunch of our clients and students talking about the work that they've gotten here, the type of results that they get. Uh, there's a little, you know, qualifier here if you're this type of person, but if you've watched this video and made it this far, I'm assuming you are, you come down here and you click this book free call button, and then you will end up on one of our team's calendars. And again, you can book a, a 15 minute support call, clarity call here with our team. And this is, uh, you don't, there's nothing to buy necessarily on this call. We actually don't even let our team sell you anything on this call, unless you're absolutely a demand. You're like, I know I want to do this work and, you know, this is this is it for me. This I'm super clear about that. This is a opportunity for you to talk to someone about your circumstances, learn more about our programs and see if they are a good fit for where you are in your life right now, for what you want to invest in. And, uh, you know, truly, I believe from the bottom of my heart, I've taught tens of thousands of people modalities like this before, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a married person, certainly if you are raising children, um, you know, any, any area of your life that you want to see more fluidity, more effortlessness, increased sense of safety and well-being, and, and a way to optimize the results that you're getting, success, achievement, whatever that might be, this work profoundly, profoundly will change your life, guys, okay? So I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Definitely book your call if you're interested, soulsandseekers.com forward slash book. See you on the next one. Bye, everybody.